last night, he took this photo with Broncos GM John Elway at a victory party for House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Now, a few weeks ago, NFL insider Ian Rappaport, Rap Sheet, how we doing, revealed Romo's number one landing spot was Denver. And then on Sunday, Broncos wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders adding fuel to the fire when he sang Romo's praises on NFL Network, saying he thinks that he could go to a championship with Romo at the helm. Stephen A. Does it make sense for the Broncos to be so supportive of Romo? Not to me. Um, and it has nothing to do with Tony Romo's abilities. It has everything to do with his availability. Um, when you think about the growth of Trevor Simeon, um, Paxton Lynch and what they surmise he's capable of, uh, you look at a guy like Tony Romo, if you're making it very, very clear to everybody, we're going for the Super Bowl right now. Not that Tony Romo, there's any reason to bring him on board for that because we all know he doesn't produce in the postseason. We all know that his 78 and 49 record and the, all, the, all, the, all the exploits that he's put forth and put on display over the years was during the regular season because come postseason time, he's been allergic to prosperity, Will Kane. We all know this. However... If you're sitting up there and you're saying, we want Tony Romo because we're trying to go for the Super Bowl now, although I don't agree, I can't argue that it would make sense because Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch ain't the immediate answer. But in the end, I don't trust his availability. And as far as I'm concerned, because you can't trust that he'll be available, you're just you know, basically stalling the growth and maturation of Trevor Simeon. And as far as I'm concerned, you don't do it. You go in a different direction, not to mention the fact that he'll probably cost too much. Oh, uh, so the answer is no. The answer is no. I said no to begin there. See, I usually start off my point, and I make my point, and him. then I sit there and I explain. You understand? Know Unlike some people. Uh, okay. I build to the point. <laughs> get him, Max. Deal. Get him, Max. You know Through my inductive that's right. approach. That's right. That's Very right. sophisticated. That's I know it's not forever. Professorial. You want this one, you want me to go? I don't um, know where you, you are. Well, you can go. You started. Go ahead. All right. It's, it's, it's crazy talk. It's, it's insane. You're talking about one of the top ten quarterbacks over the last decade. In a regular season. <sighs> You're talking about a top five defense in Denver. The one chink in this argument, the one problem in this argument that doesn't make any sense is the Denver Broncos offensive line, which is, I think, rated, rated for pro football focus 24th, 27th. That is a problem. Now, I've been very critical of John Elway as a GM, but I think one day you were out, I was sitting here with Max, and Mark Schlereth made a very compelling argument, and I can be persuaded, I'm a rational man, that I've been too hard on John Elway as a GM, and I'm willing to accept that premise, except for in one area, and that's the management of his quarterback position. He has consistently been lauded as a genius when it comes to this position, and consistently fallen short of that label. If Tony Romo is not the move for the Denver Broncos, I can make no sense of how they've handled the quarterback since Peyton Manning has left. Tony Romo, elevate Trevor Simeon to Tony Romo, not close. No, I, whatever criticisms you may have of Tony Romo, it's a football field away from Trevor Simeon. It makes you a legit contender if they can keep him on his feet. This team, I think, can be a Super Bowl contender with a quarterback like Tony Romo. And if John Elway doesn't look at his roster and see the assets, I have Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch. That's kind of like having two of the same thing. Potential, but no certainty. Bring in Tony Romo for two to three years, bring in a higher ceiling, and develop the potential underneath it. In the meantime, by the way, when you don't pick Simeon Lynch, that becomes an asset. Trade it away. You better the entire team. For, for Stephen A's, to Stephen A's point. Right. The reason none of that works is because of Tony Romo's health. Now, I love the fact that the Broncos are vocal about liking Tony Romo. First of all, it says very good things about Romo the quarterback, that the league recognizes that if you need a quarterback and you can get Romo, even if you don't have an offensive line, quarterback can make an offensive line better. Go get this guy. Maybe you can win a Super Bowl. Mess around right now. But yeah, we know. We know you went to the florist and you ordered some roses for Tony Romo. We got that a well, long the time idea, ago. Max. The idea of two to three years is to Stephen A's point. He's not available like that. I mean, his back keeps his collarbone, his back up and down, his back and discs and all kinds of compression, all kinds of things keep knocking him out for like to, to, the to the backbone. The backbone's connected to the backbone. Bones. Lots of bones in the back, and they're all broken in Tony Romo. The point is, he's not available. And what happens if you listen too closely to your players, and you're also 
right. They need an offensive line, particularly if you have an injury-prone quarterback. When you listen to players, and I'm glad that they want Romo, it shows that these guys want to win, and it shows you Romo's really good. But when you allow players to be the GM, you can wind up trading high draft picks for aging salary cap hits, which is essentially what Tony Romo would likely be for the Broncos. I want to be clear. Well, I'm the only person that likes this here. None of you, no, none of you are No, I like this? it. I like okay. it. Let, okay. me, let me get back to him, okay? okay? Because I, I just want to sit up there and say that your debate skills, you're very, very slick. I like that. I like that. Because you know what? What he has, what he does, Max, is one minute he sits up there and he's all factual. He tries to give you the impression. But then when he has his emotions, he tries to just gloss over that. Like they're facts when they're not. Which one was emotion? I'm going to tell you, I'm getting ready to go there. Okay. Tony Romo in they're the playoffs. They're alternative facts. Tony Romo, Tony Romo in the playoffs. Really? Tony Romo, two playoff victories in 10 years? Really? Now, we have to think about the Denver Broncos here. We have to think about what John Elway built. We have to think about Max Kellerman's point that he's made on numerous occasions when he talked about the absence of Brock Osweiler. Why? Because John Elway, according to Max Kellerman, you're not a superstar. You're not a franchise guy. You're a mid-level dude. Why can't I pay you like a mid-level dude? As opposed to throwing the whole kitchen sink at you just because you're my quarterback. So Max pointed that out. Why? Because he said that Elway is building something here. Well, if you're building something there and you're talking about growth and maturation, well, I'm sorry, who, re who impedes that? It's Tony Romo, because Tony Romo ain't no long-term solution. Tony Romo is an immediate solution, and that's only during the regular season. You can't sit up there and say he's that dude during the playoffs, because even you that's have to part. doubt. Even, that's right, because even you have to doubt that Tony Romo is going to be available for the postseason. You don't know whether or not he can make it to the postseason. I'd actually feel very season. comfortable if someone traded for him that's somehow, right. like right before the postseason. Right before the postseason. Again, he could maybe and stay up there for three right. four games that's right. Super Bowl don't on give a good me that. So don't, don't sit up here and talk like Tony Romo is somebody that's reliable for the postseason. He has two playoff victories in 10 years. 10 years? Okay, you ready? That is a fact. You ready? Okay, well, the difference between me and you and most everybody in the media is I'm honest when I'm emotional. I'll tell you when I'm biased. I'm not honest about my emotion? Really? Actually, it's it's on your sleeve. Really? You're right. Thank you. I take that Thank back. you. Lies. More lies you wear it on by your the sleeve. alternative you fact <laughs> talker. Go ahead. You wear it Go on ahead. your sleeve, sometimes in Go the ahead. form of jerseys that don't belong Stephen to your team. A right. 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 Stephen A is calm. Stephen A is always calm and unemotional. And never period. biased. Always. Oh, that's your period. <laughs> See? I made a mistake. I'm dealing with emotion here. You're right. I'm going to argue fact, it on that level. In fact, I'm, I'm lethal, talking to the lethal pure, combination. I'm talking to pure id here. Just emotion. So right. let me explain something to you here, emotion. Whatever. This is the situation. It's not an argument that Tony Romo is going to be available from week one to week 17 and then on into the playoffs. I can't make that promise, although I think you have highly, highly overplayed his injury. Injur 36 years of age with multiple injuries? Stop it. But he's had See, that's a lie. He's had Oh, Max acts is like his back is in a chronic condition. It's not a chronic condition. Well, of course it doesn't seem that we can't remember you with the backs. Okay. All right, deal with this. We just gave you I some. I just told you that I'm not arguing that his availability goes from week one to 17 and on into the playoffs for a Super Bowl run. But, but what I am telling you is I know how to balance risk reward. I do know how to balance assets. And you have two of potential guys in Simeon and Lynch. And here's what the thing is. Romo is not as expensive as everybody thinks. He's a $14 million base salary for whoever trades for him. That's the 23rd ranked quarterback. Mm -hmm. If you make $14 million a year for the Denver Broncos, more for the Cowboys, then you are buying essentially the 23rd most expensive quarterback in the league. And? Are you telling me the risk reward on buying the 23rd most expensive quarterback in the league isn't there with Romo? And Let by the way, if he does get hurt, you've got. Lynch or Simeon first of all, waiting there. First of all, first of all, anyway. That's first right. of all on first take. So what, what first, 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 first of all, on first take, Will Kane doesn't get to ask rhetorical questions. They actually have to be answered. And when you ask what that question, it? and you ask that question about Tony Romo in terms of what he's worth, it's not about dollars and cents. It's about how that's going to impede the progress of Trevor Simeon. We're looking at Trevor Simeon like he's a guy that can't get it done. This was his first year. It was his first year. And he was okay? about as good as Brock Osweiler. Exactly. And he I was about Captain as good as Brock Lynch Osweiler. Who's to say that he's not going to be better next year? Demarius Thomas is on the record. Emmanuel Sanders is on the record. I you have others move. on the record saying, hey, it's it possible. So when you look at Tony Romo, we're not going to question the talent that he has, but we will question his availability. We can question his postseason production. These are facts. 
They're not emotion. Don't, don't. They're just emotion. What would you give up for Tony Romo is the elite. question. Because if, if you're saying a fifth-round draft pick, go ahead. Just pay the salary, I'll take a shot. But if you're talking about a second-round draft pick or something like that, no. You no guy's going to go get hurt Aren't you just tell the, the truth? Year? You just one of those guys that wanted Tony Romo up in there just like Jerry Jones did. You are upset that Dak Prescott was the dude. That, that, you revealed yourself. You exposed him. I like ago. Tony Romo. I have. I, I think You Tony... wanted him in there. You wanted him I in want there. I want to see him get another shot, too. I want to see if he's in Because he's extremely underrated. Let Prescott. Will answer all these questions. People, three because people he's extremely underrated, Molly. From people like Stephen A. Smith, who latch on to a few anecdotal a elements few. and moments in his <laughs> career. A few. You're right. You somehow Jeez. managed to perpetuate this into a popular narrative that Tony Romo isn't clutch, isn't great. Don't when the stats about the playoff do not It's not a few. Up. It's a couple of playoff wins. <laughs> it's a, a couple. couple that he's in like, 10 years. To. Whatever in you say. 10 spend. years. Here's the argument, guys. If, if you keep pulling me on to his potential to get injured, you'll win the debate. But I'm not having a debate with you about whether or not Tony Romo ever gets injured. I am having a debate with you on whether or not the Denver Broncos should risk to get the reward for Tony Romo. The risk of a draft pick, which you can get back by trading Simeon I'm or Lynch. With that. You can get that pe pick back. Thus, all you're paying for Tony Romo is the $14 million salary. I'm is the 23rd ranked quarterback well, here's salary where, here's in the NFL. Where I and what do you right. get? Here's where I will what concede. Get? I'll concede. Something way better I'll than concede. Are you saying that Tony Romo is a guy you should take that risk on strictly for next year? Yes. Or are you saying that he's a guy you should bring in with no regard for the others that you have in place because they're so worthless, and that's going to be the case I two, three years down the road? Because Tony Romo, to me, is a one-year solution at best. Two, two. two and I have exponentially I more faith in Tony Romo than Trevor. And finally, by the way, if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you're only going to get not a first-round pick for Tony Romo and he's a great backup quarterback who you might need, why would you No, they need the cap relief. Before they we go to break, our producer, our friend Kevin Reeder, tried to get by us without letting us know it was his birthday. Oh, really? Oh. We want to wish a happy belated birthday. 30 never looks so good, Kevin. I want to I want to I want to wish father. I want to wish Kevin Reeder uh -huh. A happy birthday. I want to let him know just because he looks a little bit older that he is, that's not a bad thing. Okay? It's sometimes... Uh, it's not nice. I think he looks he, great he, for 50. He, 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 I think that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm saying and, nice. and not only that, and not only that, not only, not oh, 40, only that, sorry, he's 40. 40. I'm sorry. No, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was 30. Because he does look younger than 40. He does look younger than 40. He does look younger than 40. I will say this, though. Kevin... Is a good young man. I have seen him eating a little bit too many. Oh twins. my God! I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying. Don't me, wish me happy birthday. I'm trying to be here for him. I'm, I'm trying done. to be here for him. Yes, oh Kevin Beach. I'm trying to be here for him. Kevin Beach. He's a little bit too many Twinkies. He's rapping it now, Molly. He's rapping it now. He's rapping it now. He never wins. Coming All up, right. Cassie. Look, too many Twinkies. <laughs> in trouble I'm with just saying, well, I'm, I'm trying to be there for him. I'm trying to be there. He's in the NFL. Be over. Andrew Luck didn't get a lot of help this year, but did Jim Ursay finally make the move that will turn the tide for the Colts? Stay here. I was joking. I'm he was 30, and you believed I, I, I it.